Hola, soy Caterina de Direct to Spanish y hoy vamos a hablar del verbo gustar. So, the verb gustar, technically, we translate it to mean to like. Every time we have a sentence with the word gustar in it, conjugated, not conjugated, that's the best way for it to make sense in English. However, if we really want to understand why it works the way that it works, The better way to translate it is more like something is pleasing to someone else. Now that whole idea of to someone else is the idea that we used with indirect object pronouns. He gave the present to me. I'm the indirect object pronoun. So we have, this is the conjugation for gustar, right? So everything you see in parentheses is um optional basically it's used to emphasize or to specify so i also explain this in the indirect object pronouns video and basically we can say sentences without these things that are in parentheses we just use them like i said to specify or emphasize or something of the sort Okay, now what's outside of the parentheses is required. Me, te, le, les, nos lets us know who we're talking about. But the gusta or gustan lets us know what is um, being liked or what is pleasing, right? So if I say I like to run, right? It's like running is pleasing to me. So the verb gustar is going to be conjugated based on that to run, that thing. It's not conjugated for me. Okay, so same idea. I like bread. <laughs> bread is pleasing to me. So bread is the thing that we're conjugating the Uh, gustar for. Okay, so with something singular like bread, we would use gusta. With something plural uh, like I like his new songs, right? That's plural, so gustan. Now, when we have a verb, like I said, with uh, to run, for example, correr we would use gusta. If we have a verb that comes after it, we use gusta, okay? And we don't say it like we can say it in English. In English, we could say, um, I like running on the weekends. No, running, ing, not happening. We're not gonna say me gusta corriendo. We're gonna say me gusta correr, okay? Also, with me saying, uh, I like bread, like I said, me gusta el pan. I can't just say I like bread. It's like it's almost like the bread, but you're not really gonna translate it that way. It's just that that article is required after the verb gustar. So those are the different kinds of things we're gonna see. Now this will make more sense with the examples, but some other things I want to point out is the fact that we're not using yo and we're not using tú. Those two words are out completely out with the verb gustar, okay? So we use me and ti and me and te. We don't use anything about yo or tu, okay? Um, so now with the gusta and gustan, as you can see, that is with anyone we're talking about because again, it's not being conjugated for the person that we're talking about. It's being conjugated for the thing that is pleasing to that person. Okay, so we have me when we're talking about me, something that I like. Te when I'm talking about you informally, something that you like. Le when I'm talking about what he, she, or you formally like. Les when I'm talking about what they like or you all like. And nos when I'm talking about what we like. Okay, now let's see some examples. So, here at the bottom, I, I have an example and I have one thing crossed out. I will get to that, but let's see the regular examples first. So, 
a ti te gusta ver películas. So, the, a ti, um, every a in the word is going to be in parentheses because, again, it's um, an optional part. And we only really need to use it when we're trying to really make that emphasis or specify. I will show you uh, a little bit of what I mean about that in uh, some later examples. But just keep in mind that the a ah is necessary. If you want to say ti, you have to say the a. Ah, okay? So you like to watch or watching movies. Now, again, notice I'm not going to say viendo películas. No. Te gusta ver, ver, not viendo películas. Okay? And gusta because it's ver. When a verb comes after, it doesn't matter if there are 50 verbs after it. If the thing that comes directly after it is a verb, we use gusta. Okay? So, uh, keep in mind, a nosotros, we don't really need it, but I'm putting it there so that you know. Nos gusta el español. So, we like Spanish. Now, like I said, el español. We have to say the el. We're not going to say nos gusta español. Okay? But the translation is going to be we like Spanish, not the Spanish. So, just keep that difference in mind. So, a Jorge le gustan los videojuegos. So, video games. He likes video games. So, gustan because we have plural noun afterwards. Now, why do we use le? Because a él le gustan, right? Because he likes them, right? But we're using the name Jorge because maybe we want to, uh, we're talking about multiple people or we don't really know who we're talking about. So, we're going to say a Jorge le gusta, blah, blah, blah. Now, if we all know who we're talking about, I don't need to say a Jorge le gusta, no. I just say le gusta or le gustan in this case, and then that's it, okay? Uh, me gusta cantar y bailar, right? I don't need the a mí, but I'm just showing you. So, I like to sing and dance. Now, two verbs. It doesn't matter. Like I said, it doesn't matter if there's 50 verbs there. It doesn't matter. Uh, the fact that right after me gusta comes a verb, automatically it's gusta, right? The fact that we're talking about a verb, it's automatically gusta, okay? So me gusta cantar y bailar. A ellas les gusta el pan y el arroz. So if I wanted to uh, specify who I was talking about, a ellas... But if we know who I'm talking about, les gusta, and then I continue. Now, it doesn't matter that I mentioned two nouns here. What comes directly after it is that singular noun. So that's how I'm going to naturally conjugate it. So they like bread and rice. Carbs. Carbs are great. Okay. <laughs> uh, me gustan mucho los perros. Now, I said I would get to this example. This is the way that we say it in Spanish. It's like saying, I like a lot dogs, <laughs> right? So it's uh, it's different, but I'm pointing this out because English speakers will often say, me gustan los perros mucho. Now, people will understand you. It's fine. But what are you going to typically hear? Me gustan mucho or me gusta mucho, depending on what we're talking about. Here we have gustan because los perros. It doesn't matter that the word mucho is afterwards. We're still talking about dogs, right? Okay. Okay, so what do you do if you're in a conversation with someone and they say that they like something or they don't like something and you want to say me too or... Me neither, or I do, or I don't. How do you say those things? Well, okay, so imagine someone says to you, me gusta ir al cine. Now, a common mistake that a lot of English speakers will make is that they'll say, yo también. Now, I told you, we're not using yo here, okay? So, it's like going to the movies is pleasing to me, right? So you have to say, to me too, to agree. So we can still use the también, but we're not using yo. Now here is where the thing comes in to um, let us know that you're talking about yourself. 
So you have to say a mi, a mi, because you're talking about yourself. También. So it's like to me too. Going to the movies is pleasing to me too. <laughs> okay? But a better translation, what we would really say would be me too. All right, now how do you say I don't? So if someone's like, I like blah, 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 and you're like, nah, I don't. <laughs> how do you say that? So think about it. Think about it. A mm? mí no. A mí no. So I don't. All right, now let's think about a conversation where someone says they don't like something, and maybe you don't like it either, or you do look like it. How do you talk about that? No me gustan las canciones tristes. I don't like sad songs. So how do you say me neither? Now, another common mistake, saying yo tampoco. If we use the same structure from above, how could we say me neither? A mí tampoco. A mí tampoco me gustan. You can say that whole thing. Or you just say, a mí tampoco. Same thing with a mí también. You have the option to repeat the whole sentence if you want. But um, it's a lot quicker and easier, obviously, to just say me neither. A mí tampoco. All right. And now, how do you say that you do? Like, I do. So, I don't like blah, blah, blah. I do. Well, I do, right? <laughs> so, how do you say that? A mí sí. Okay, so I pointed this out because uh, I think a lot of the times, like I said, we just think, okay, what's the translation for me too? Okay, yo también. What's the translation for uh, me neither? Yo tampoco. Great, perfect, but when we're using a verb like gustar and it's and we're the indirect object and it's to me, we have to reflect that in saying that it's pleasing also to me. So to me as well. Okay, so <laughs> now I know I said that we are not going to be using gustar like yo gusto, tu gustas, right? But I wanted to put it here to talk about a couple of things. So it would be yo gusto, tu gustas, el ella usted gusta, ellos ellas ustedes gustan. And nosotros, nosotras gustamos, right? But we, this is not how we use the verb. But there are some little situations where understanding how this might be used could be helpful. Now, if you are uh, just learning this verb and you're not comfortable at all with it yet, I do not recommend that you watch this because it might be confusing. Just repeat the first part, practice it for a little while, eventually you can come back to this part of the video, okay? But if you are uh, a little bit more comfortable with the verb, then watch this part. So, now, I told you how we say this thing is pleasing to me. So, gustar is being conjugated for that thing, right? If we talk about um, pizza, right? It's pizza is pleasing to me. So why do we use gusta? Because it's la pizza. So technically we're saying um, it, right? And a concept that we have to get used to in Spanish is the fact that we can say it by using el or ella. For example, I want to stay in it. I want to stay in it. Now, depending on what we're, we're talking about, we're talking about um, a room, for example. Okay, like I want to stay in it. We could say en el, because el cuarto, en el. Now, in that situation, we're using it as the translation, but because of the fact that we have feminine and masculine in, nouns in Spanish, we represent that with en el. So, that is why we use gusta, because that's the conjugation that we use for el, ella, and usted. Now, when we talk about them, whether it be objects or whatever, we use gustan because ellos or ellas, right? 
That's the idea behind it. Now, why did I write the other ones if we only use gusta and gusta? Because you might hear these other ones. Now, let me explain to you a situation in which you might hear it. Someone saying to someone else, I like you. Uh, this is a more than friends kind of like. It's not just like, oh, I think you're a good person. I like you. You're chill. No, it's like, a, I like you. <laughs> um, so it would be me gustas. Gustas because it's like, no, this is weird in this situation, but it's like, you are pleasing to me, right? So you is what it's being conjugated for. Gustas. To me. Me. Me gustas. Okay? Now, I know this concept might be like, what the heck is going on? It's just a different way of thinking. And the more you use it, the better you'll get at it. Now, let's see some examples of different ways that we use gustar in different tenses uh, to see how we can apply this knowledge that we have to that. So, we're using gustar conjugated as el or ella if we're talking about it right and we're using gustar conjugated as gustan if we're talking about um them because it's like ellos or ellas right now that carries through into every tense that we use let me show you what i mean by that so Te va a gustar la película. So you're going to like the movie. Now, we're saying va a because we have la película. So it's like ella, for example, right? El or ella. That's the conjugation that we're thinking of. So you would say ella va a blah, 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 right? So since we need to conjugate for la película, it's va a. It's not vas a. No, we're not conjugating for you. It's we're conjugating for la película. Okay? Me gustó la película. We're still conjugating for la película. So think about it. What's the conjugation in simple past tense for uh, ella? What is it? Gustó. Well, we know it ends in the O if it's an AR verb and um, it's regular, we know it ends in that O, right? So here we have gusto, right? So again, the verb is conjugating for the thing that we're talking about, not for us, okay? Now, why am I pointing this out? Because sometimes it's easy to understand the concept in present tense, like it makes sense, like you use it enough, like you get it, but then immediately you bring it into another tense and you feel like it doesn't make sense anymore. It does still make sense. It's still the same logic. It's just, like I said, another way of thinking. And we have to like try to wrap our minds around this way of thinking. And it will make things so much easier for us because there are a ton of other word, verbs that function in this exact same way. Okay? Now, with the last sentence, here's some subjunctive. Don't think about it. If you don't know subjunctive, don't worry about it. But um, we just know that Aya is is like that because of el video has nothing to do with you because if it had to do with you it would be ayas so, so, so. okay so espero que te haya gustado el video so i hope you liked the video is what that means i really do hope you liked it and don't forget to leave your comments down below like the video if you found it helpful share it with friends um and click that notification bell I know you're already subscribed, right? <laughs> so make sure you just click that notification bell so that you will get notifications every time I post a new video. Okay? Thank you for watching. Bye.